Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to an episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog. This is episode 203. And uh, today we're going to continue and conclude this Entertainment Weekly article by Devin Coggin. I'm sorry I didn't give her a shout out in the previous episode, uh, but yeah, big shout out to Devin for covering this story on July 13th. Uh, this is really awesome that she brought this information to us and got this first look, got those two images to us, and got those quotes from Ruben Fleischer to us. But now we have some plot details, some minor ones, uh, but we also get uh, some quotes from Tom Hardy. And then also maybe we'll talk a little bit about the rating and stuff like that. So this might be a little bit of a longer video than I originally planned but in this um, you know she talks about you know Tom Hardy's son and a lot of people have brought that up before hey Tom Hardy wants to make a movie for his son and everyone was saying oh in his last interview he said oh this is so great something my son to watch and everyone was like yeah but his son's 10 years old you know so it's probably not gonna be rated R blah 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 and I kept saying I don't know about that Tom Hardy seems like a pretty cool dad and uh, I imagine he allows his son to go see rated R movies my mom certainly let me see rated R movies when I was 10 because she really didn't care she knew as long as I knew it was fake that's all she cared about. And that was the big lesson she was trying to teach me anytime I would see a movie. But she never really cared if it was rated R, um, especially for things like, you know, action or violence or something like that, or even horror. She didn't really care. Um, a little did she know she was going to, you know, her son was going to grow up to be a total weirdo like I am now. Um, but so, you know, I think it's fine. Like, you know, I, I never thought for a second that this movie was going to be PG-13. I thought the whole point of making it was to make it R so that we could, if they do carnage later on, it would already be established in the world that carnage makes sense to be full-on bloody and gory uh, so that way you know you can amp up the action from this movie to the next one uh, so it always made sense to me that this is going to be rated r and it seems like it and i think venom gaming also commented saying that in spain it's been rated 16 plus which most likely means it'll be rated r over here in the states so to get that right out of the bat it seems like you know that's going to go you know that's going to be rated r it seems like it and i'm pretty sure they might confirm that next week at comic-con and then maybe they'll even give us a red band trailer if they feel now's the time to do it or maybe they'll wait closer to the movie i don't know um or maybe they just won't do a red band trailer maybe it's not that important to them to do one uh, but i hope they do it'd be cool to you know to to get something a little bit more to show the the actual edge that this movie might have in it um and then also we have here uh some some uh, comments from tom hardy where he says as far as marvel characters go i have to say for me venom looks the coolest uh hardy says with a laugh i know that sounds a bit shallow but i appreciate that he has a kind of brazen swagger and a zero foxtrot attitude so basically like kind of an alpha male status in a way um but as far as the look goes you know demands attention demands focus uh you know demands all eyes on him at all times and I agree like I, I think I told this story on my live stream recently but there was like a four-year-old kid that was coming out of church when I was at Golden Apple Comics a couple months ago and he came in with his mom and they were fresh out of church because there's like a church right around the corner and she was like oh yeah we just came from church I wanted to buy him a comic book and there was that web of venom poster hanging on the on the wall and the kid was just staring at it and the mom goes why do you like this thing so much and I go oh is he a big venom fan she goes yeah he knows nothing about the character but every time we come in he's staring at these images of the character and I go I was like that's crazy I was like well that's you know maybe nurture that maybe you know you, it could spawn creativity in your son to see something like this like it's a pretty neat you know cr you know character in general visually and she was like yeah but he looks so dark you know obviously church lady so she was like ah he looks a little twisted and dark and I'm like well he's catholic <laughs> and I was like I was like venom's actually a catholic guy and he's um and he's you know a man who makes mistakes and he has this alien symbiote and he's trying to you know do the right thing I was like I don't know it's, it's kind of neat you know and she goes all right she's like well maybe I'll give it a chance one day she goes but he's he's still four years old right now so it's not going to be today but he was just like blown away so they uh I, I was like well do you mind if we give him a poster because those web of venom posters were free so i was like hey do you mind if we just give him one of the venom posters so we can at least have something to you know of the character to look at and there's no story so it won't you know whatever and she goes I don't know if I want that hanging up in my son's room. She goes, but yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll take it for now. And he was like, please, mom, please. So that was pretty cool to me. I thought that was neat. So I think, you know, there's something to that comment about Venom looking cool. He, he demands attention. He has this look that you can't look away from. No matter how horrifying he can get, you still have to lock your eyes on it. And that's, uh, that, that's, a, lot, <laughs> that's a lot for the character. I mean, that's a good thing, obviously. But uh, that just shows the power of Todd McFarlane's artwork and then Eric Larson and Bagley and all the people that have kept Venom alive over these years with that look. And then these filmmakers for translating that look as accurately as possible. I think uh, that's a good thing. And focusing on that look is a big part of who Venom is. Uh, but then we also have uh, this other comment where he says, there's a tragic clown element, Tom Hardy says, uh, which I find funny and is har harmonious with some of the work that I like to do. 
Uh, the British actor who is 40 now says, there's something funny about the circumstances of having a gift, but it's a tragic gift. It's a superpower you don't really want, but at the same time, you love it. It makes you feel special. He's a reluctant hero and an anti-hero. And uh, those, those comments are pretty good too. I, I agree that there is some tragedy to Eddie Brock, but also the tragedy comes from Eddie Brock is the point of his life when the suit came to him. He was at his lowest. And that's what makes his story work in a lot of ways is that he's like, oh, finally my salvation. I have the power. Don't we all, when we feel weak and we feel like outcast, we just want the power to prove everyone wrong. We want the power to make a statement, to make a stand. And he gets this power and it doesn't go the way it should go. Uh, and that is what's really cool about Venom. And that's what makes him stand out, you know, compared to a lot of the other characters in comics in general. And uh, he does go on to say other things like that too, about uh, comparing him to other comics or other characters in comics. Um, he says, uh, you know, about the Venom duality though, he says, it's a bit like Ren and Stimpy, you know? Hardy says laughing, they have different sounds. I always saw Venom as sounding like a James Brown lounge lizard. Uh, and Eddie Brock is kind of, and then, you know, he switches his tone like an, aw, shucks. I don't know, an everyday kind of guy. But he's inherited this massive ego, this beast. Uh, so that's uh, Tom Hardy's lines there. And then he says, you know, as a result of a black and white hero with morals, uh, he's a, a character with morals anything but, uh, uh, is what they put. But they said, uh, there's that biting off heads issue that you have to deal with when it comes to Venom, Hardy admits, which is not what you would expect from, say, Captain America taking down a crook. Uh, definitely Venom has that added element of, you know, of viciousness to him. Um, we've seen in the comics, especially with Matt Gargan, which we're about to get into, and that's why my new intro says from Eddie Brock to Matt Gargan, because we're transitioning into the Matt Gargan era of, uh, of Venom and his story. Uh, but we're also going to talk about anti-Venom as well with Eddie Brock. So uh, stay tuned for that on those discussion videos. But he's, uh, he's referencing, there are times in the comics where Venom gets very vicious, and that happened in the earlier days of Venom, but definitely big time in the Matt Gargan days, when Matt Gargan would bite the arm off of Steel Spider or bite someone's head off and spit out the helmet you know like he would suck the the skull out of the helmet and spit out the helmet so there is a lot of viciousness with venom and then maybe even that's a hint to something venom will do in the movie maybe he will chew somebody's limb off uh, in the film which would be pretty awesome there's always that cover too i remember from spider-man rain which is a story we definitely got to talk about at some point soon where uh on the cover it's spider-man biting half of uh spider-man's or is it venom biting half of spider-man's body from like his chest up so i'll have that image up so you can see what it looks like but we got to talk about that comic soon that's a pretty good one um so yeah those are all the comments from tom hardy but uh before we end this video let's talk about the little piece of movie news that they put in here as well regarding the plot of the film. In the midst of all these quotes uh, that, that Devin got, these really great quotes, she also put in this uh, paragraph here that uh, talks a little bit about the plot of the movie. And, uh, and she says uh, that, see, Venom may be a Marvel protagonist, but he's no cape and tights do-gooder. His human side is Eddie Brock, a journalist reeling from a recent scandal. Desperate to get back on top, he starts investigating the Life Foundation and its cryptic leader, Dr. Carlton Drake. So right there, he's reeling from a recent scandal. Maybe he did move from New York to San Francisco when this movie starts. Maybe he did mess something up in New York. Sin Eater story, maybe they reference he worked for the Bugle or the Globe or whatever, uh, If they want, depending if they want to go to the comic route or change it to Bugle, whatever they want to do. Uh, but I think that's really cool that they mention that in this article because it seems like a throwaway line but really if we're to take this to be a hundred percent true that maybe Devin has this inside information knowing exactly the plot of the film and why eddie does certain things then that's big to me i think that shows that we might actually get that scene in new york because some people were saying oh there was like a new york uh, subway person cast you know listed and a new york officer or something like that and it's like yeah it's entirely possible maybe in a flashback or something and it's eddie brock who was on his way up screwed something up and is now coming back home to san francisco where his you know family is or his father is uh, or maybe he's you know like all right i failed here i'm going to go back home and then he gets wind of a, a possible scoop with uh, the Life Foundation, starts researching him and thinks maybe by exposing someone bad, he can actually get back on top and do something good. So that's interesting to hear that he might be down on his luck at the start of this movie, that he might actually already be dealing with failure uh, and that this is his last chance for redemption and this blows up in his face too. I really dig that. I think that's a really cool idea for this movie and also a great arc for the character overall is that he starts off on the bottom and then works his way 
to the middle-ish, <laughs> maybe, um, with an alien attached to him. Um, but then she says, before long, Eddie is exposed to a slimy, tar-like alien known as a symbiote, uh, which imbues him with extraordinary powers and takes up residence in his head rent-free. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, so this little line here, this little paragraph that Devin wrote is pretty awesome and pretty interesting. And like I said, I, that to me gets me more excited. It's like, oh wow, they really are doing Lethal Protector. Lethal Protector, the comic, was about Eddie Brock leaving New York and coming back to San Francisco after making a deal with Spider-Man saying, look, I will go my way and I, and you saved Anne Way and you saved her life, uh, but this is where we part ways. So I'm going to go home, I'm going to go my way, and you're going to stay here in New York, and I promise I won't kill any innocents in San Francisco, and as long as you're not a total D-bag here in New York, then I won't have to come back and chew your head off. You know, so that's kind of the relationship that they had in the comics and why Eddie Brock went back to San Francisco. So here, hearing that maybe he was on his way up career-wise and it bombed and he had to go back home, I think that's a story a lot of people can identify with and connect with is someone who goes goes out on that hero's journey, goes out into the world to try to make something of themselves. And then not always does it go our way. And we do have to go back home, move back in with our parents, you know, for a short time or whatever we got to do to, you know, to make ends meet, to get by. Uh, survival is obviously something built into all of us and something we all worry about, uh, you know, is, is our safety and our, you know, and, and whether we can eat another meal or not. So to hear that, you know, Eddie Brock is that, that just speaks to him as a character, not only in this movie, but also shows that they're trying to do the version of him from the comics too, where he is a guy who is always down on his luck. And he is a guy that has almost Peter Parker luck, only amplified sometimes in a bad way. Uh, so, but a lot of that is coming from his own personal decisions that he makes. So I don't know, I liked all this stuff. I know this is a longer episode, but I wanted to really sink my teeth into the rest of this article because I thought the stuff Tom Hardy said was good. I thought mentioning the rating that it could possibly be R is a, you know, also something I wanted to touch on. Uh, and, and not saying it is R for sure. I'm just saying that a lot of clues point to it. And I've kind of always assumed it would be because I thought that was the point of making this. And I think she also mentioned in this article that it's not tied to the homecoming, you know, storyline. It's not tied to the Sony and Disney deal at all. This is purely its own thing. And, uh, and that Tom Holland is not even, you know, in like the contract to Venom. So it's like, I don't even think they, I think the way she worded it was that, uh, you know, Tom Holland couldn't even cross over with Tom Hardy. But again, that's just the current Disney deal. I'm sure after the next Spider-Man movie or whenever that contract ends, they could renegotiate and find a way to cross stuff over. So there is hope for some of you out there, but for right now, I'm just pumped that we're getting a strictly Venom movie and one to kick off potentially a pretty neat universe full of monsters that are related to Spider-Man, like Morbius and Nightwatch and, uh, and you know, Silver and Black, I guess. I don't know if that movie's still going to happen, but whatever happens, I'll keep my eye on it and uh, we'll talk about what we can on this show. So thanks so much. Let me know what you think of all these comments, all the quotes, everything down below. What do you think of that plot detail, the rating? I want to hear what you think. So let me know in those comments. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.